So this is an EcoFlow Delta. And this is the EcoFlow Delta Pro. It is absolutely massive. It is crazy that they went from this tiny little solar generator to this. This is like a full-size off-grid solar power system. With this type of setup, anybody can build a solar power system. Now, the first major upgrade is the type of cell being used. On the older model, they were using cobalt-based lithium ion cells, pretty much the same type of cell you would find in a laptop. They're lightweight, they can charge and discharge very quickly, but those benefits come at a significant cost to the cell's rate of degradation. In the manual, it states that after 800 cycles, you will only retain 60% of its original capacity. And that is pretty bad. So if you want just a backup system that you're not cycling with solar every day, then this is great. But for everybody else, you should not use this for solar. But the Delta Pro is using lithium iron phosphate, which has a much lower rate of degradation. And the manual states 3,500 cycles to 80% capacity. So this is a huge improvement. You can actually use this for off-grid solar now. But people need to understand this difference. If you want a backup system that's not being used with solar, just go for this. This thing is plenty powerful. It's lightweight, easy to move around. But if you wanna cycle it every single day, you need to stick with the Delta Pro. Now, something I found interesting is that even though it's using lithium iron phosphate, it doesn't weigh that much considering the capacity and its output in all of its features. For example, the Delta Pro is 3.6 kilowatt hours of storage capacity, and the older model is 1.29 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. So I would expect with the new chemistry, this would be like four or five times as heavy but it's not. Um, this one is 100 pounds and the older model is 30 pounds. So they crammed a lot into this unit and it's still pretty light considering the chemistry that they're using. Now the solar input has massively increased. On the old model, you can only do 400 watts at a maximum voltage of 65 volts. On the new Delta Pro, it is 1600 watts at 150 volts. And that's a serious improvement, especially the voltage. Um, you can actually run a good sized array to the Delta Pro. Now let's stop comparing these two units because they're on a totally different level. But now let's talk about the features that only the Delta Pro has. Love that. The Delta Pro has an expansion battery and yes, it has lithium iron phosphate as well. And it is so easy to connect them together. And this is the cable it comes with to connect these two units together. And the quality of their cable is fantastic. Compare it to the Blue Eddy, which literally looks like a toy. This looks like something you would charge an EV with. These are not on the same level. So let's connect them and show you how easy it is. So on the back of the Delta Pro, you have two battery expansion covers. And yes, a single Delta Pro can be connected to two batteries at the same time. So first we're gonna plug one into battery port number one then the expansion battery has its own port and that's it these two batteries are now working together you do not have to set up anything now that these batteries are connected they'll charge and discharge together if i connected a solar array to this one it would charge this one up first because it's at a lower state of charge and then they would charge up together to 100 percent also, if you put a large load on these batteries, they will discharge at the same rate. And that was something I was very curious if they got right, and they actually did. I was scared that one battery would cut out before the other one did, but that never happened, no matter how much of a load I put on the AC output. And right here on the screen, it shows how many batteries are connected. If I put two, it would have an X and then two. Next cool feature is it has a remote monitoring screen. You can control it and see the state of charge with this little screen. And I haven't connected this one yet, so let's see how easy it is. So first you turn it on with this button, and then there's a pairing button right here, and then you press it on the EcoFlow Delta Pro as well. Did it work? Oh, nice! On the first try, it connected to this one. It was connected to the other one on the other side of the shop before. So it actually works! Let's turn the inverter on, and then turn the DC on and off. How cool is that? 
So how cool is this? If you're in a boat, a van, or an RV, you can remotely monitor and control your solar power system and even see how much solar is coming in with this little device. And I like the information they display with the EcoFlow. It tells you only what you really need to know and how many hours you can run this load for or how long it will take to recharge the battery up to 100%. Furthermore, they actually have an app. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's updating the firmware, darn it. But these have connected every single time and I have three of these Delta Pros. Never had a single issue with any of them with this app. On their older models, it was awful. I could not get it to update and the updates did not fix a thing. I actually had some problems on the older EcoFlow. So check out those videos if you wanna do so. And this app shows you everything, how much is going in or out, how much in watts is going out of the 12 volt receptacles and each individual USB charger. And then under settings, you can even change the cycling bandwidth. So the discharge charge level, you can discharge to 10% and up to 90% if that's your thing. And the AC charge speed, the smart generator settings and everything else. Now, if you click on input, it will show you how much solar is coming in and it even graphs it over time. And then it shows you how many watts from the AC receptacle, the infinity port if you charge from an EV charger and the state of charge of the extra battery. So it literally shows everything here. So by far, this is the best Wi-Fi app for any solar generator that's on the market. I don't think of anyone that compares to this at all. Now, something I dislike is these AC receptacles. Look how close they are to each other. If you have a power supply or a wall wart, it will take up pretty much this whole panel. So you're gonna have to use an extension cord for sure with these outlets. Next, we have USB-A, fast charge USB, and USB-C, two of them. How nice is that? And again, the traditional EcoFlow Delta screen, input, output, state of charge, and how long it will take to charge or discharge to 100% or down to 0%. Now on the side of the unit, you have a 12 volt 30 amp max Anderson power pole connector. And this is what you want to use to connect a 12 volt fuse block or to connect a 12 volt fridge. It also has a cigarette lighter adapter, but I'm not a big fan of those. But it can handle 10 amps max, so 120 watts. And below that is 12 volt, three amp max power plugs. I don't know what these are for. Some devices can use them, but uh, make sure it's the right voltage before you plug anything in there. Now below that is communication buttons. So this is the Wi-Fi reset, and then the pairing button for Bluetooth. And if you wanna have the screen connected with the cable, you connect it right here and right here. And then below that standby, I'm not sure what this is for and I keep checking the manual. I need to email them about this one. Now below those ports is the Infinity AC connection. And this thing is pretty wild. And this is where you connect the double voltage AC hub. Now to make this hub work, you need two Delta Pros connected to it. And then you can run 240 volt loads or use a generator cord and a transfer switch to back up your entire house or a critical loads panel with a generator input. And this thing can handle 7,200 watts, which is pretty impressive. Now this hub can power air conditioners, Bitcoin ASIC miners, which I ran for weeks, and all sorts of other 240 volt loads. But it's not designed to work with EV charger, specifically Tesla's charger. And unfortunately, I learned that the hard way. So please check out the links below if you wanna learn more. Now let's discuss the DC charging input. So you have two cables that come with the unit with the same exact adapter. You can either charge with solar or you can charge with an alternator. And we call this type of circuit a buck boost DC to DC converter. So either it can raise the voltage, like if we have a 12 volt source connected, but we need to boost it to 48 volts, which is the battery, or if we need to lower the voltage from 150 volts for a solar panel array down to 48 volts for the charger. But you can only do one input at a time. And this is a beginner video, so we're not gonna get into depth about how that circuit works, but it's cool that they actually have this circuit on the Delta Pro. So whether you charge one or the other, it will just work. Also, it has PowerPoint tracking, which increases the power availability if your input voltage is pretty high. And the efficiency is gonna be very good as well. 
well. Some solar generators on the market have a very low input MPPT, which is pretty much worthless. <coughs> Jackery. <coughs> Other models is around 30 or 35 volts, which is completely pointless. But for how small they are, it makes sense. So I'm glad that when they made this unit bigger, they actually raised the input voltage limit, which is very smart. I was gonna bash on them like crazy if they didn't, but they actually did, and 150 volts is very good. Now let's say you buy a Delta Pro and an expansion battery, and a second Delta Pro and a second expansion battery. And let's say you do not connect these to the grid at all, and each one has its own 1600 watt array. And then you connect them together with this double voltage hub, you are going to have a seriously powerful system. The only thing you can't do is charge an EV, but for everything else, you can easily use this to power 240 volt loads. So pretty impressive. Now for the past month, I've been testing this unit on my own. I've been running it at max output 24 seven when I did my load test and I've never had a single hiccup. I've had multiple arrays connected to it, glass panels, flex panels, and again, not a single hiccup at all. And in my opinion, this is the best way to test these units. I actually overloaded the inverter's output with my Tesla charger in a way that it's not supposed to be wired and it still powered it flawlessly. And that fried the AC input circuit on one of my Delta Pros. But guess what? I charged it with solar anyways because that's a separate circuit and it ran my Bitcoin miners without issue 24 seven. So overall, it has impressed me pretty well well usually I run into some hiccups or overload or something but this time this one really does work well um, I pushed over what it's rated for for hours and nothing happened it just it just worked now we're gonna go to the other side of the shop and I'm gonna show you my personal favorite setup for the Delta Pro so this is my favorite configuration a single Delta Pro with two expansion batteries you max out the storage capacity and then you add a large solar panel array so this one only has 1200 watts but it charges these up pretty quickly you want to see how your system's doing you just press this button and then you'll see the state of charge of all of of these batteries this one I was using for the review so it's charging back up to catch up to these ones but this configuration is my favorite now with this configuration of three batteries you get 10.8 kilowatt hours and if you charge with a 1600 watt array it will take 6.75 hours to recharge which is actually pretty good for this size of a system this is an actual off-grid solar power system you could easily run a cabin or a small house or whatever you want really now for the fun part we're going to compare it to the ac300 by blue Eddy, which is sitting there in the corner and talk about the things that i dislike about this system first downside is you cannot stack these batteries so you're gonna to have to have them on the ground and they're gonna take up a lot of space. I do not like that. Next downside is double voltage hub. This cable, when it's connected, you need to pull out the Delta Pro so that you can plug it in. And I do not like the placement of this connection. This is awful. So the expansion batteries need to be pushed back and this one needs to be pushed forward. If not, it will hit into this cable. I really wish they designed this differently or had 90 degree plugs instead. And the cables are very short. I think overall, this thing's just a very awkward to use design. I wish this could be wall mounted and it had longer cables. That would be fantastic because I just had a bunch of cables on the ground and it just looked awful. I also wonder how how many people are going to use this double voltage hub i just can't think of a configuration that looks very professional with these sitting on the ground side to side now this is the ac300 by blue Eddy. it's very similar to the delta pro but quite a bit different and first off you can stack the batteries i like this design better than the delta pro but these cables on this side look horrendous look at how far they stick out so why can't delta pro and blue Eddy find a way to stack these solar generators but have a cable with a 90 degree angle or maybe a bar that connects these together or something else. I just hate these cables. But the Delta Pro expansion cable is by far better than this one. This one works perfectly fine, but it is lower quality materials. The Delta Pro looks way better. Next huge difference is look at these receptacles. They are very wide and far apart. And that's a benefit over the Delta Pro. This one, you could actually put a wall adapter and there's a lot more space and it has six receptacles instead of four. Look how close they are on the Delta Pro. You really can't fit that much on here. Now, even though you can stack the AC300, it takes up more space. 
Just two of these units right here have more capacity than this entire stack. And I would say the footprint of two of these is the same footprint as this whole system, but this is much more compact. Now, something I love about the AC300 is the spare batteries can charge themselves and they're pretty much individual solar power systems. On the Delta Pro expansion batteries, they only work when it's connected to a Delta Pro. But these batteries have a USB, a 12 volt receptacle, and then on this side, you can actually connect solar panels or you can charge it with an alternator. So the functionality of this is fantastic. You could actually connect multiple solar panel arrays to a single AC300 stack. And you can add a lot of batteries and put a 240 volt hub on here. But unfortunately, Bluetti only sent me a single stack, so I can't test out the 240 volt output features. So they might be good, they might be bad, I have no idea. But I do like this design, it looks nice. I wish we could combine the Delta Pro with the AC300 and we would have a perfect system. Now get this, the AC300 can handle 2,400 watts of solar and the Delta Pro can only handle 6 1600 watts of solar. So the Bluetti is a clear winner in that regard. And this stack could actually handle two more batteries. So that one can actually store more power than the Delta Pro. And that's the first Bluetti that never had any issues. On the older models, there were lots of software issues with the shunt or the temperature sensors or something. I even had an older Bluetti just shut down for no reason for a whole day and it wouldn't turn back on. Um, this one has never had any of those issues, but it's the first one to do so. But EcoFlow had some software issues in some of our past reviews as well. Now that we know all of the differences between these two models, which one would I personally buy? I actually love the AC300 and it works great, but having the wheels in the small form factor is very convenient. And these are still considered solar generators, so being able to move them around helps quite a bit. I think with my life and how I use it on my property, I would much rather have Delta Pros than to have one of these. Now, if I lived in a tiny home or a cabin and I could only choose one solar power system, I would probably go with the AC300 because it is more powerful. It has a larger solar input, and I like the redundancy of each spare battery being able to output 12 volts. So if the main unit were to fail, I can still use those to power other devices. And I think that's very useful, especially if I'm far away from civilization. If your Delta Pro goes down, your whole system's down. These things do nothing when the main system goes down. At least with the AC300, I could power 12 volt loads, run an inverter, or do whatever I need, especially for communication devices or something else. But as a mobile unit that I don't have to depend my life on, the Delta Pro is fantastic. But yeah, I'd probably go with the Blue Eddy if, I, if that was my only system. If you disagree, please let me know why below. I've been using both of these systems, for this one for a month, that one for like six months. So I know that system very well now. But if you think I'm missing some Something, please let me know. Also, the EV charger on the Delta Pro I think is pretty useless. I don't think people are going to use that really ever. It is a cool feature though and I like how they're adding more features, but I would never use that personally. So I hope you guys liked the video. It took a long time to test these units. I'm going to do further efficiency testing on the Delta Pro and the AC300 in due time, but I really wanted to run these through their paces to see if I could break them. I did break one of the Delta Pros because I did not use it how it was designed to be used, but that was my fault 100%. Besides that, I have not had any issues with the Delta Pro or the AC300 when they're used as advertised. So thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.